Hey guys, today I thought I'd do a review on my HK USB Compact Series pistol. Now the USB Compact pistols come in four calibers, the 45 ACP, 40 Smith & Wesson, 357 SIG or 9mm. My particular handgun is in 40 Smith & Wesson. Let me show you what it comes with when you buy it. You get the HK hard case. It comes with the literature of the operator's manual. It comes with the lock, a special Allen wrench to help take down the gun and this key used to detail strip the weapon. Let me give you some specs on the gun. Each USB compact pistol has a modified browning locking system recoil buffer. The length on it from end to end is 6.81 inches. The height is 5 inches. The width is really streamlined at 1.14 inches. The barrel length on this handgun is 3.58 inches. And the thing I love most about this handgun is a sight radius on it. It's nearly the full length of the gun. Bring it up for you guys to see that. And that's 5.35 inches. I have True Dot Tritium Night Sights on it. It weighs in at 1.47 pounds without the magazine. With the magazine, when it's empty, it's 1.71 pounds. And the magazine capacity is 12. Well, let's talk about the magazine. Like I said, the capacity is 12. It's all steel. The followers are really durable. The best way to describe these magazines is rugged. These each have had a lot of use and a lot of rounds through them. I have about 5,000 rounds through this gun. I carry it every day. It's my favorite carry pistol. When I do carry it, I carry it in this carbon fiber Safari Land holster on my hip. Or if you guys haven't seen my vehicle carry, look up that video. I usually carry it in a Serpa by Blackhawk. Okay, let's get to more about the gun here. This is a version 1. So that means it has the safety, the firing, and the decocker on that side. I'll show you how that works. When it's in single action, you can bring it all the way down to decock it. This gun was made to be carried cocked and locked. That's how I carry it. Just like in 1911. One of the things I find interesting about this gun is the slide release. Now most handguns are made to be drawn back and put back in a battery that way, you know, by pulling it and then releasing it. This handgun was designed not to be that way. It was designed to use the magazine or the slide release as a slide release. If you can see how pronounced that is, when I bring it up for you guys, just watch that. I just love that feature. Now let's talk about one of the most controversial things about all HK guns, and that's the magazine release. You can see here when I bring it up, it's not a push button. What you do is you push down on it, and then it releases the, the magazine. Now most people think this is not superior because they like the push button and that's what they train with. But me, you know, I thought it was a joke too when I first got it. But after carrying it, you realize how superior it is. I used to carry a Beretta 96 or a Glock 17 and they both have push buttons. After firing multiple, multiple rounds, I found that it got a little harder to press that and dropping the magazine became an issue. When it's like this, when you release it, there's no issue. You just push it and there it goes. There's nothing for it to get caught on. And let's say for some reason the magazine did get swelled or stuck, it does have these indents here on the magazine well, so you can pull it out nice and easy. There's no problems with that. Well, let's talk about the trigger pull. On single action, I've got it at a crisp two point, or I guess two and three quarter pounds. On, on double action, it's actually about eight pounds. That's how I like it, nice and easy. This gun does have double strike capability. Let me turn it over for you guys. You can see the other side. The stipling on it is amazing. On the side, it's aggressive, but not too aggressive, so it doesn't rip up your hand. But right on the palm swell here, it's nice and aggressive where you want it to be, and also on the front of it, it is. It also has some stipling up here on the trigger guard, and that's how I like to shoot it. I like to wrap my finger around and hold it there. The target acquisition is a lot faster that way for me. 
let's talk about takedown. To take down, first thing you do, check to make sure it's safe, drop the magazine, and dry fire it. These are made to be dry fired in the takedown, so don't worry about it. It'll take the abuse. These are made to take 20,000 plus rounds at minimum. So after dry firing, you pull back the gun and you line up that little indent with that the slide release. You push the slide release forward from the other side and you pull it out and then release it. And where you push it from was on the other side right there. That's the only way it'll work. I'll put that down. Next thing you do is you push it, let it slide forward off the side. It's really easy. You can see the metal slide rails right there. Let it focus. Sorry guys. Set that down. You look at the slide here. We got the spring assembly. Push that forward. Let it come out. You can see the recoil buffer on it. And that does reduce recoil. I've shot one without it. It's like night and day. Slide the barrel forward and bring it back. And there's your barrel. Set the slide down. And that's full takedown. And if you can see this, these are really thick barrels. They were just made to be built like a tank. That's what they are. If I had to describe this HK as anything, it's a tank with a Ferrari engine. That's the best way to put it. Okay, to put it back, you push the barrel back in, let it sit. You take the spring assembly, put that front end right there. Make sure it gets in the hole. Sorry guys, it's kind of hard to do through the viewfinder. Push it forward so that little notch gets on the end there. Then you take the slide, put it back on the slide, follow the rails. Okay, see that? Pull it back, let it cock. Then you want to do the same thing you did before. Slide that back, put it in the slide release, make sure it's lined up, and push it forward to its end. Then you want to test it. Bring it back three or four times, dry fire it, bring it back again, put on the safety, try the decocker, it's ready to go. Put the slide back in, set it down. If you guys want to buy the sand gun, you won't be disappointed. I have at least, I'd say 3,000 hours carrying it. It's on my hip every day. I've never had one failure to feed, no problems whatsoever. The groups I got on it are phenomenal. At 20 feet, it's just one whole groups. You can't miss. Um, if you guys are wondering what I do carry in this handgun, it's these 180 grain Federal HSTs. Out of this handgun, I found that they mushroom the best, and I get the most accuracy from them. Way better than the Golden Sabres. You know, way better than the Rangers, than the Black Talons, everything else I've shot through it. These are by far superior for this handgun. Your mileage may vary. I'm not sure if I mentioned this yet, but I do carry it in the Safari Land holster with a carbon fiber insert. I just love this holster. Really comfortable. And if you guys haven't seen my vehicle carry, I do carry it in the Serpa. Look it up in my videos and I'm sure you'll like it. You guys should try that setup. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Look forward to upcoming videos. And I'll talk to you guys later.